Be sure to stay to the end because the last pick is spicy. Hot stuff coming through. Ah! These are 10 of the worst albums of the 90s to come from once respected thrash metal bands of the 80s. And we're starting with Anthrax, Volume 8, The Threat is Real in 1998. No, God, please, no, 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 no! This is their worst rated album on Metal Storm with a 6.2, but honorable mentions to both Stomp 442 and Sound of White Noise, which were also considered. The band calls it a transitional album, I just call it torture. And it doesn't help that it's over an hour either. Some glimmers of cool drumming and guitar work, but never enough to push it into something I find enjoyable. Just a patchwork of ideas already done better by the likes of Stone Temple Pilots and Soundgarden. Piss and Vinegar also has some Megadeth energy. I wouldn't go so far as to call this terrible. I've heard way worse, but it's really dull and just very paint by numbers, except for Toast to the Extras. That one is definitely bad. Next up is Destruction with the least successful human cannonball in 1998. Yikes! Thomas Rosenmerkel on vocals here, and there is a reason that the band have completely disowned this record and effectively ejected from their official discography. Definitely sounds like they're trying to jump on the Pantera bandwagon, but man, is the execution just terrible. It's loud, muddled, it's, it's a mess, with a poor grasp on songwriting and really obnoxious vocals. That said, credit where it's due for some of the performances. The drums and bass in particular are pretty wicked. It's just a shame that it's not in service of something worth the effort. With a different vocal performance, this could be interesting, but in my opinion, he makes this pretty much unlistenable. It lives up to its name, I guess, and uh, <laughs> yeah, it is a 4.9 on Metal Storm from the audience, which is, I think, the lowest community score I've ever seen, especially for a pretty respected band. Nah, you fucked up. Next up is Creator with Renewal in 1992. <laughs> Oh god, how embarrassing. Continuing the train of bad vocal performances with tracks like Winter Martyrium, I think that this music could actually be totally crushing with a more groove metal vibe, but instead we just get these lame, raspy, one-note howls that have zero weight behind them. It's a shame since I'm mostly down with the instrumentation, and I like the occasional industrial elements as well, but I just can't ignore his voice and it ruins the entire thing. It's like when that one wrong ingredient can infect the taste of an entire recipe. This is the first creator album to really take a bad Bad turn after an excellent run from Endless Pain to Coma of Souls, but it unfortunately wouldn't be their last. I could just as easily have put Outcast or Endorama on here too. I love Creator, but they may have among the worst 90s eras of all. We still have plenty more albums to go, but if you're enjoying the video so far, be sure to hit the like button and comment below your own picks that maybe we left out or just your additional thoughts on them. Maybe you disagree. Also, shout out to Slayer's Diabolus in Musica. I know plenty of people would include it, but frankly, I find it to be relatively enjoyable, especially in comparison to some of these. But next up is Overkill with The Killing Kind in 1996. Going through a label chains here and also the first album to feature some new guitar players. The end result just isn't very good. The little yaz on battle are just plain silly and act as kind of a fair summary of just what to expect in general. More lame dad metal with some decent riffs here and there. Half the time I feel like I'm listening to Snakes in Barrels. <laughs> Boldface Pagan Stomp makes me want to delete myself. Overkill have kind of a spotty discography in general, but overall I find something to enjoy in most of their albums. I think this is the one case probably where I just do not like anything about it. Then we have Exodus with Force of Habit. I know that you never gave me a chance to prove myself. So another one with a piddling 6.9 on Metal Storm, which is over half a score lower than Impact. Continuing their transition into more of a groove metal sound, but with some progressive influences as well on the longer tracks, but really right from the opener, Thorn in My Side, the term that really comes to mind again is butt rock. And unfortunately, strap in for a lot more of that because this shit sandwich is over 68 minutes long. There are still some solid riffs like on the opening of Me, Myself, and I, and some good bass parts too, but not a single song I would really point to as 
good overall. I'll try to give some credit for incorporating new sounds like the brass instruments on Bitch, but it all just comes off as a much lamer version of like Van Halen. You could do worse, but it is a slog to get through. Then we have Sacred Reich with Independent in 1993. <laughs> An album that was so bad, I think I ended up cutting it from the thrash metal third album's tier list. Sad that while most groups on this list managed to put out at least four to five great albums before hitting the slump, it only took number three for this band to take a nosedive. And what's worse is that going groove metal tends to be the least offensive direction you could go as a thrash band from the 80s, and yet somehow they horrifically mucked up what should have been a fairly easy transition. The lyrics are cringe, the vocal performance is wince-inducing, and the instrumentation is about as dull and generic as they come. I don't really I really love Sacred Reich to begin with, but I still expect more from a band with a debut as strong as Ignorance. Next up is Zentrix with Scourge in 1996. This was an audience recommendation from the community tab that I had not heard before and it easily beat out some of the other records I was considering. Just really dull generic groove metal with vocals bad enough that they could have also made my worst Yarlers ranking. I know I make fun of X-Hoarder a lot on that front, but this is just so much worse than that and at least X-Hoarder still has some solid guitar work to somewhat make up for those vocals. I feel like I'm listening in on an improvised rehearsal with the band just testing out ideas that they should be ironing out further before actually committing to the disc. This is the only album with vocalist Simon Gordon, and I can see why, but he's not solely to blame either. So wrong. Then we have Annihilator with Remains in 1997. Now again, I love industrial metal. It's one of my favorite genres and really takes me back to the 90s and early 2000s when it was at its peak popularity. Unfortunately, this is not one of the great albums remembered from that era for a reason. Honestly, all things considered, it's not all bad. It's clear that they were also toying with some Faith No More influences. And as far as trends to jump on, it might as well be one of the more talented bands of the time. That said, the execution is pretty botched. There are some decent sections as far as the instrumentation goes, but it all comes off as just a much less or Xerox to lean into the 90s theme, and the vocals in particular are questionable at best. And then there are moments like Wind and It's You, where I just don't even know what the hell they're going for. It's like easy listening for moms in the dentist office waiting room. Then a big one here I think would make most people's lists, it's Megadeth with Risk in 1999. <laughs> This is so corny. One of the most infamous releases of metal in general, out of all of the missteps of the big four, this probably ranks around third, I would say, after like Saint Anger and Megadeth's own Super Collider a few years later. You have the electronic elements on Insomnia, which I can imagine got mixed reactions from longtime listeners and led one reviewer from Entertainment Weekly to compare it to Nine Inch Nails, of all things. Crush'em is kind of fun, and Mustaine at one point even said he felt that Wonderlust is one of the best songs he's ever written, which I don't agree with, but I I don't think it's as far off of the tracks that people love from like Bon Jovi. Another case where this was the lowest Metascore rated album and I've heard it trashed more than a few times, but I have to say that personally I don't hate it. I don't think it's their worst album. It's still a low point for the genre and was both a critical and commercial failure, but at least it's kind of interesting. Interesting? Yeah. Before we get to the last pick, another honorable mention here to Metallica's Load and Reload. I wasn't sure if they quite fit here since they at least do have a few really good jams, but I once more feel the need to say that an album that's 20% hits and 80% skips is still largely a bad album. Search your feelings, you know it to be true. But my number one on here, the spicy pick, is Death Angel with Act 3 in 1990. How fucking lame. Regular viewers know that a lot of my lists include at least one spicy take, and this is definitely the one I think that people are gonna have the hardest time with. I see some people loving this album, but holy shit, personally, I think it's pretty bad. I appreciate the experimentation with different styles, but rarely do I think they actually pan out and it makes for a real mess of an album. The opening title track, Falling Asleep and Stop, are all pretty good, and as far as the weirder stuff goes, I do enjoy the funky, almost primus energy of Discontinued. The rest ranges from a chore to downright painful, especially Veil of Deception and A Room with a View. As always, y'all are free to enjoy whatever you enjoy. I don't make these videos to encourage others to agree with me, but I just do not understand the appeal of 
love this record, especially when 1990 was packed with insanely good thrash releases before the decade went to hell. Speaking of which, I made a video about that that you can watch right here. Or also watch this playlist for more thrash metal videos and rankings. And again, let me know down below what are some more thrash metal band albums that aren't necessarily thrash metal from the 90s that really went to shit. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the trenches.